Ah, have you ever smelled something that brought you back to your childhood? Maybe the smell of waxy crayons puts you back in kindergarten. Or maybe the smell of chlorine makes you feel like you're a kid at the pool again. This is actually a well-documented phenomenon known as odor-evoked autobiographical memory, or the Proust effect. What's weird is that this doesn't happen with the other senses. The memories we associate with smell tend to be older and more emotional than those evoked by, say, sight or hearing. So what is it about smell that causes this phenomenon? As it turns out, smell is our oldest and most primal sense. The structure of the brain reveals that smell has intimate connections with memory and emotion like no other sense does. Let's take a closer look. When we smell, what we're really doing is detecting certain particles in the air called odorants. A particle enters your nose and is met with a field of about 40 million olfactory receptors, nerves specialized to detecting different scents. If the particle is something you can smell, it'll match with a receptor and fire off a neural signal. Here's where it gets weird. Your other senses, sight, hearing, touch, they all go to the thalamus at this point, which routes them to the appropriate processing center in the brain. But not smell. After an odorant binds to a receptor, that signal goes directly to the brain's smell station, the olfactory bulb. Now, that olfactory bulb, in fact, is prime real estate. The limbic system is an ancient tangle of brain structures that control how you feel, what you remember, how you behave, and, it turns out, what you smell. The olfactory bulb lives next to two especially important structures, the hippocampus and the amygdala. Neuroscientists suspect it's this key position that gives smell its potency in emotion and memory. The hippocampus is strongly linked to memory processing and storage. So when you smell something, the scent could be getting all tangled up with the feeling of the event as a whole, as the hippocampus embeds it into your memory. But keep in mind that the hippocampus is specifically tied to episodic memory. Someone with a damaged hippocampus can still learn new facts and skills, but they have trouble recalling new experiences. So you could teach them, say, how to tie their shoes, and they'd remember how to do it, but they wouldn't remember the experience of you teaching them. That's why scent memories so rarely include specific facts and information. The scent of mothballs can remind you what it's like to be at your grandmother's house, but it can't remind you when her birthday is. Sorry. The amygdala is tied to how we process emotion, and we believe it's this connection that makes smell so much more emotional than the other senses. In one study, researchers showed people paintings and had them smell specific scents. People who were prompted to remember the paintings with the scents rather than words experienced much more emotional recollections of the paintings they had seen. It's beautiful. While we usually downplay smell as a less important sense, the emotional weight of smell is so great that people who suffer from anosmia, a loss of smell, often report feeling duller emotions and even experiencing depression. On the other hand, having a normal sense of smell can enable scents as seemingly mundane as diesel to trigger intense negative emotions, especially in individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder. One patient in a study at Emory University School of Medicine, in fact, experienced just this. Upon smelling the residue diesel from a neighborhood fire, he immediately began recalling an accident from the Vietnam War more than 30 years ago, all in vivid detail. He was forced to relive the feelings of intense guilt and helplessness from being unable to save his fellow soldiers. That's the power of smell. Of course, most people don't undergo experiences that extreme when they enter an art room or walk by a pool, but it's undeniable that our sense of smell is inextricably linked with what we remember and what we feel. And those things, in turn, shape the very people we are. So keep your noses sniffing, and thank you for watching.